Hey guys, welcome to the Data Tech channel. Hope you guys are doing well and staying safe. In this channel, we talk about the modern data technologies and do hands-on practice with them. This is a video series about the Apache Spark and where we're going to learn about all the concepts of Spark using PySpark, which is a Python library of Spark. So without further ado, let's start. Here's the list of prerequisites we need for this video series. So we need to have a basic understanding of Python and SQL, being comfortable with Jupyter Notebooks, and a basic knowledge about distributed cluster computing. So what is Spark? So in very simple words, we can say it's an extremely powerful in-memory analytics engine, which is built on top of cluster distributed computing technology and which is used for large data processing. Spark achieved this high performance for both batch and stream data using the DAG scheduler, a query optimizer, and a physical education engine. As a user, we don't have to worry about all those things. The thing we need to know, it's a very powerful tool which is used in real world for ETL and analytics workspace for the big data. Now let's talk about the features of it. As we know, it's in memory, so it's very fast. It have fault tolerance, which means in case of any node failure or crash, we don't lose data. Third feature is like it's easy to use because it's available. It's have like high, it's have a high level APIs in multiple languages. That's why it's easy to use. It gives programmers the choice to work in their preference preferred language. Uh, for the in the fourth feature for deployment, it can be deployed in multi it can be deployed in uh, distributed computing system such as like Hadoop, Apache Mes Mesos, Kubernetes standalone. And nowadays we have a lot of managed services in cloud where Apache Spark is available. And the last feature is like it can access variety of data sources. Now look at the like some misconceptions about the Spark. Uh, so one thing which I want to highlight that Spark is not concerned about the data sources. A lot of people think like it can only connect with the like HDFS or Hive, but that's not true. It can connect to Azure, S3, Kafka, Cassandra, flat files, uh, your relational database and the list goes on and the other misconception is like people when they hear the word spark they think it's a part of the Hadoop ecosystem it's not like it's a it's a separate entity now look at the spark components so if we look from top to bottom spark core is the base engine for this large scale parallel and distributed data processing. Basically, you can say it is the place where the all magic happen about the Spark. But as a user, you don't deal with this thing a lot. And on top of that, like we have two more high level APIs, which is like data set, data frames. We're going to talk about them in this course. And additional libraries, which are built on top of the core Spark core. So these libraries are Spark SQL, Spark Streaming, Machine Learning, Graphics. Spark SQL is basically uh, a library which allow users to, like which allow like SQL users to work in Spark. Spark, Spark Streaming is for the real-time data, machine learning for doing the feature engineering and AI, AI kind of things. And, and we, in, in this and all these components, we will discuss in, in detail in this video series. Now look at the mechanics of Spark, like how it works in a cluster. So basically to work with Spark, we need a cluster. And for some people who don't know what is a cluster, a cluster is basically a set of computers which work together. So in cluster, we basically write our Spark application in one of the node or a computer, which is known as driver program, which drives the application. And in our driver program, the first thing we need to do, we need to create a Spark context or 
from Spark uh, 2.0, we call it a Spark session, which basically works with the cluster managers to manage various jobs. S driver program and a Spark session take care of the job execution within the cluster. And job is basically a job is uh, divided into multiple tasks, which are distributed over the worker nodes and the worker nodes who, who whose job is to basically execute these tasks. I know, like I talked all about, it's very confusing. So let's try to understand this as a layman, what exactly Spark Mechanics looks like. So we as a user, we need to, we, are, like we, we wrote the task which need to be done. So we go to this cluster manager and ask, Okay, we need to run some tasks. Can you allocate some resources? And when I say we, we as a client write a program and that's called driver program. So once we complete our, like we, we list out the tasks we need to done, we go to the driver, go to the cluster manager and ask for the resources to execute those tasks. And then as I mentioned in the last, like in our driver, we need to have a Spark session, which is basically like entry point to, for us in any Spark application. And the cluster manager's job is to manage the resources or like to provide the resources to do our task. And then once we get the resources, the workers, nodes basically complete those tasks. This is like as a layman, you can understand like we as a, we as a user write a job, ask, and submit it to the cluster manager, which provide us the resources to execute those tasks and workers where like the actual on workers, like the executors actually complete the task. Now look at the APIs of the Spark. So there are like three APIs. One is RDD, other is data frame and the data sets RDD as we saw in the Spark component slide, is the low-level API and it's a part of the Spark core. So RDD stands for Resilient Data Distributed Data Set. And some of the features of RDD is like it's, it, it is partitioned over the cluster. It means like it's the data, the RDD is divided into different partitions. It's immutable, you can't change it but he will be confused. If we can't change this, how we can use it? Whenever you made a change to RDD, you have to store it into another RDD and it's resilient. So in case of any failure or anything, like RDD have the fault tolerance capability and it rebuilt. And there are two types of operations we can do on RDD. One is transformation and the other is the action. And it's a lazy, Spark is a, like a, lazy worker, lazy operated. So what that means is until you don't do an action, like you don't perform anything else. So that's all about RDD. Now look at the data set. Data set is basically, which is like data sets and data frame, they both build on top of RDD. But basically data set is a collection of, just like it's, it's a distributed collection of data. And this API is available in Scala and Java not in Python. And now look at the data frames. As we all heard about data frames from Python's pandas, it's basically a tabular presentation of the data. It is built on top of RDD and it's organized in the named columns. Or you can say it's a distributed collection of raw objects. So a data set with a row is a data frame. It inf imposes a structure on the data. It means like it's have a schema, have better performance. And as I mentioned, like conceptually, it's similar to the relational database or a data frame in R or Python. Now we understand about what is RDD, data frame data sets, but this is like just a very basic information about them. Now we will look at the, what's the difference in them and which API we're going to use in this video series. So here's the main difference between RDD, data frame, and data sets. 
So for RDD, the first thing in, uh, in terms of optimization, there is no built-in optimizations. So whoever is working on the RMD, RDD, they have to write the optimization code of that. So this is one of the like drawback of RDD. Data frame and data sets, they both have catalyst optimizers. So that's why they perform well. Uh, next is the schema. So in RDD, you have to define the schema manually. Wherever in data frame or data sets, they can infer the data automatically. For speed, RDD is slower than both data frame and data set, even to perform simple operations. While data frame is faster than both data, RDDs and data sets, and while data set is faster than RDD, but a bit slower than data frames. In terms of typed, RDD and data sets, they both are typed, and data frame, data frame is not typed. Basically, whenever it's, uh, if it's reading the data from uh, different sources, there could be, uh, like it, it doesn't know the what type of the data it's reading, and, and it doesn't, it can't identify the type, that's why it's untyped. And that's the reason whenever like you're reading the data, you can have analysis error, like a runtime, you're reading the data from, let's say, a source. Uh, let's say you're reading the data from MySQL and your date type doesn't match with the data frame. And then you will not like get the error in like during this syntax. Like whenever you're writing it, it won't give you error until you don't run it. So it is a, like a runtime error. So now we know the like differences between RDD, data frame and data set. So for this video series, we're going to use the data frame. There are like few things. Why are we going to use the data frame? So uh, people use RDD when they want more control over the, their data. They want to do more development kind of work. But this course is more designed for the data analysis, extract detail and like data processing, those kind of activities. So for that, we need something which is like in a tabular format, fast, and is and, and, and we, we are familiar with it. So that's why we go with the data frame. That's all for the first video of this, um, this, video, this video series. Uh, thanks for watching it. If you like it, please share and comment and wait for the second video.